very warm welcome to Beyond Markets. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Esther Awuni. On the show today, we'll look at Africa and the French connection as we discuss music and entertainment and the future of television. As always, you can join the conversation with the hashtag Beyond Markets and you can follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther Ubudaga. Now, since its launch in 2003, Trace TV has strived to carve a niche as a cultural bridge between France, Africa, and the rest of the world. The chairman and CEO of Trace TV, Olivier Lauchet, joins me as we discuss Africa and the French connection. Olivier, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. My pleasure, Esther. You know, sometimes when I look at Trace TV, I, I look at the depth, I look at the reach, it's just simply amazing. And I know that, um, you, I know you've had several interviews talking about the success story of Trace TV on its own, but I would like, you know, for our viewers, for our viewers who are watch watching you on this channel for the first time, I'd like us to take a couple of steps back. To what would you attribute the success of Trace TV to? I think the success is a combination of different things. First, a vision. We had a vision 15 years ago uh, that what we call the Afro-urban music and entertainment will grow and somehow we will potentially dominate the world. And the second thing is about the execution because we understood also from the very beginning that especially Africa is not just one country. So we had to really embrace the reality and the diversity of the African continent. So we decided to localize our approach of the African continent. This is why we created multiple channels, like Twist Naja for Nigeria, or Twist Toka for Angola and Mozambique, or Twist Kitoko for DRC, or Twist Africa in the French-speaking uh, Western mm -hmm. African countries. So it's really this, uh, this vision also on understanding of what the people like on what also the artists were looking for. And you, you knew that already, because I'm just thinking, you had, all the, all, you had this idea, you had this vision of you know, presenting or showcasing African music or entertainment, as it were, to the world. Weren't you nervous about what the response would be? Obviously, whenever you create a new business, you are nervous, yeah. because you hope that it will work well. But at the end, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But we had really a very strong confidence on the fact that, uh, first of all, music is the number one center of interest for African people as far as entertainment is concerned, even a little bit stronger than sport. So uh, we knew that there was really a market. There, there were so nearly one billion people who love music and who live with music because music is part of everyday life for most people in Africa. So we knew that at the very beginning. Second, we knew that we had more and more great African artist. Third, we knew also that the production cost to really produce good music and good music videos were, you know, diminishing because of the advance in technology. You know, with your smartphone now, you can even, mm -hmm. um, you know, shoot a, a music video. So when you see the combination of all these, when you see the fact also that there was this uh, very strong phenomenon of having all these African creators who wanted really to say their word to the world, okay. first to their country, but also to the world. So I think the different ingredients were ready to build what you describe as a success and that we consider absolutely as a success. You know, I'm just remembering, I mean, trying to take my mind back 15 years ago, I knew there was a time when, when you look at some of the quality of the music videos and you look at how it was done, you know, in Western countries, you can actually see that difference in terms of quality. And we could see some inconsistency in quality sometimes. Were there some of the issues that you had to deal with? I mean, if you're going to put your best foot forward, did you have to, was it difficult to have to choose among so many? Maybe, yes, there was talent, but in terms of the final product. Well, that that was the biggest challenge at the beginning. You are absolutely right. Uh, when we started 15 years ago, the quality of the African music videos were not was not consistent and, uh, and was not at the same level at what we could find in the US or in Europe or even in certain countries in the, in the Caribbean. So what we did, and it took us a few years, we had a lot of interaction with the artists, with the managers, with the producers. And we told them, guys, now there is a platform. We are open to your music. Before, you did not have that load. You couldn't really put your, your, your production somewhere that will have this type of impact. You have to make this effort. So we, we, we spent a lot of time with them, and they did understood, because uh, they did understand, sorry, because it was their interest. It, it, they didn't just do it for, for, for Trace. Trace was part of a global thing, because obviously there are also the online platforms, there are other music channels. So it was really in their best interest 
if they wanted to compete with the biggest artists, they needed to have also the, the best music videos, the best um, production. What about comp the, the, the competition space for you? I mean, as Trace TV, there were other music channels. What was competition like for you? I think, first of all, we like competition because competition gives you also, you know, motivation to always try to do better, to, to be stronger. The big difference between us and our, I would say, local competitors mainly is our global network. We've got right now 22 different channels and 160 countries. We cover more than, a, uh, you know, we've got about 200 million people uh, interacting somehow with our different channels. So we've got the scale. And what we like to do is also to take some artists, let's say from Nigeria, and because we think they are great, and try to expose them to the entire world. So with one button, you can make a success in 160 countries. So I think this is a big difference, and this is why so many artists want to work with us also. Well, talking about, I mean, digital, I know that, uh, or how challenging was it for you to develop, uh, not just develop online and mobile products, but also to cater to the need for the multi-platform? I think it, it was an absolute necessity, necessity because, you know, especially the young audience is spending now more time online mm -hmm. than any other, you know, type of, uh, you know, entertainment conception. So, so we, we needed to make sure that the Trace brand will be with them and their day-to-day -day life. So this is why we first decided to launch some mobile services in partnership with mobile operators. We did it in the Caribbean, we did it in Africa, we did it in France. And then we decided to create our own online platform named Chase Play, which is a distribution platform where you can find our TV channels, also some digital radios, and also some uh, on-demand content. And we are now massively investing, and in, I would say all these kind of digital ecosystem around our TV channels, around our radio station, to make sure that when people are looking for the music they love, they can find it on one of the three platforms, whether they are in their country of origins, like let's say Nigeria, or also we want the Nigerian diaspora and the US and the UK to be able to get access to the best Nigerian content on the go always. And speaking about content, I know that part of what Trace TV does is to also help develop the artists and also you know, put them out, out there. But what are your thoughts in terms of how the artists themselves from across Nigeria, I know that Nigeria, places like Nigeria, Kenya and South mm -hmm. Africa are quite popular in mm -hmm. terms of artists and quality. But what are your thoughts in terms of how the artists themselves, uh, how they're branding themselves, putting themselves, uh, trying to put their best foot out there and trying to, trying to be at par, uh, working uh, uh, with the global best practices, as it were? I think we could really see during the last 10 years a, a huge improvement. Uh, you know, at the very beginning, um, on the, 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 I think the, the best and the most notable evolution is the fact that, I don't really like to use this name, but the, the artists now understand they are a package. It's not just the music. You have to have the music, you have to have the image, you have to have the attitude, you have to have um, how to speak in front of a camera, you know, you must know how to perform in front of a big audience. So you need to work. You know, you can have the, the best talent ever if you don't work, if you don't prepare, if you don't have the proper environment around you. Um, you, you won't really reach the success that you are expecting. So we could really see the, this evolution, not for all artists. There are still a lot of artists who think it's easy. You've got some mm. talent, you just release your song, it will work. But what about Isn't regions? Maybe not for all artists, but what about regions in terms of, would you say there was that um, even, well, I guess obviously development may not have been even, but in terms of how the regions were able to pick up Definitely, Nigeria is certainly uh, leading the pack because also of the very strong competition, because of the size of the population, and also the influence of the American culture and the Nigerian, you know, um, environment. So you've got a lot of references, and, uh, and you can see when the Nigerian artists succeed, some of them will try to go and sign a contract directly in the U.S. So there is this kind of, uh, you know, you know, motivation, emulation that that happens all the time um, here. But you can also see in South Africa, in Ghana, in, um, in Kenya, uh, more and more in DRC, on the uh, Ivory Coast. For me, and also Angola, the, the quality of the production of, of, of Angolan music, you know, Kizumba, and Kuduru is, is, is better and better. So globally, I would say there is a, a huge progress in Africa, very strong performances in Nigeria, definitely. And, and it's true that your music, the Nigerian music, really travels very well. It's very crossover, not just in Africa, but uh, we tested it and we introduced some Nigerian artists and, uh, and some French club also in the Caribbean. Yeah, I mean, I was I wanted, well. I wanted to ask, I'm curious. I mean, how does a typical French music-loving French person 
receive or respond to artists from Africa, especially from the popular ones, Nigeria, South Africa? Well, it's difficult for me to, to, to speak for the <laughs> traditional, popular, you know, French people because they're all different, like in Nigeria. But when it's good music, it's good music. You know, whether it's from Nigeria, from the U.S., from, from Russia. On, I think there's a certain magic in Africa about the, 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 the rhythm, about the, the, the melody, about the, the way the music will move people. And, um, and I think that uh, uh, we've got this, this uh, you know, image of being, you know, very festive countries where we know how to entertain people, we know how to have fun. And I think all this reflects in the music that the artists um, are producing. And, um, and if you see the top 50, you know, uh, biggest hits in the world during the last 10 years, there will be some, you know, black music somehow, mm. always. Even the, the Latin music is very influenced by the African music. What is very interesting also, you can see, even the biggest, you know, American artists from, from Beyonce to Michael Jackson, they really use this kind of African influence to try to re-energize their music production. So not only you've got the African artists, you know, putting out um, great songs, but also the African culture influence other artists to really increase uh, their music power and make it maybe even more crossover. Now, it's been 15 years, and uh, you, you've been quoted, I, I told you this earlier, you've been quoted as saying that there is no a mystery to uh, being successful in this sector, in this industry. And I know that many people who have tried and failed will argue that point with you and say, no, it's a very complicated industry. Uh, it uh, can be very, you know, can be actually quite mysterious sometimes. So how, what do you say to those people? First of all, is that right? It's a very complicated industry, especially <laughs> right now with the digital revolution, the impact of the digital platform on, on the media business, on the music business. You could see a, a very strong transformation of the music uh, business globally. But just for people really to understand, you know, uh, no one r right now is buying CDs. That's, that's nearly dead. Uh, but the level of the music market right now is still below what it was 10 years ago. So even if the streaming platform are growing, if, even if people are, are listening or watching more and more you know, music online, uh, the level of, of remuneration given by this uh, YouTube platform or Spotify or Deezer is not very interesting for the artists. So we have to find also a new way to monetize um, uh, you know, the work and the, on, the, on the talent and the skill of, of, of the artists. And to come back to the to the, the miracle or the mystery or whatever. It's, as I said, it's a vision, hard work, uh, knowledge of the people, listening to the people, interacting with all the stakeholders of the industry, and be very humble. Be always very, very humble, because what can work today may, can, not, work. may not work tomorrow. I knew that. <laughs> so we, we, we try to, to maintain also a okay. lot of innovation in what we are trying to okay, do. Okay, Olivia, we'll just hold that for us. We'll take a quick break, and I'll be right back to pick up from where we left off. I've been speaking to Olivier Laoshe, chairman and CEO of Trace Team. Still with me in the studio is Olivier Laoshe. He's a chairman and CEO of Trace TV. And we're looking at Nigeria and the French Connection, of course, focusing on the music and entertainment industry in Africa. Thank you so much, Olivier, for your time so far. My pleasure. Now, of course, you're in Nigeria for uh, the part of why you're in Nigeria is for also for the 2020 African culture season, which will be launched in Paris. You're also going to be here with uh, the French president, Mr. Emmanuel Macron. Tell us all about that. Yes, in fact, the French president is doing an official visit to, to Nigeria, and he will be meet many people, but part of his trip will be focused on developing a bigger, better, more in-depth cultural relation between Africa and France. And uh, he's going to announce that in 2020, um, there will be an, um, a cultural season really focused on Africa during the entire year in France. So what is that aiming to achieve? I think the perception of, 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 of Emmanuel Macron is that we have to change the narrative of the relation between France and Africa. You know, um, obviously, this is a very complex relation because um, this relation was a very tough relation, you know, uh, four, year, four centuries of liberalism and then colonialism. And so and when you still today ask uh, a traditional French people, white French people, why are there some black people in France? 
the guy will tell you, I don't know, maybe they came here because they are looking for a job, they don't have a job in their country, so they want to take my job, something like that. So that creates a lot of bad you know, perception, bad dynamic, on the reality that the history of France is completely linked to the history of Africa. This country and this continent are really very, very connected because of six centuries of, his, of common history. So most people in France do not know that that well. So I think the French president wants to use this kind of cultural dimension to change the perception of Africa, to teach people in France what is really the contemporary um, African you know, scene on a, so that people have a, a new you know, image of uh, what they thought was Africa, but what in fact Africa is not exactly what their perception is right now. Is it, is, would you think, would it be a yearly and annual event? I don't know. I don't know. I think we have to start Because somewhere. I'm just thinking if it's going to be a one-off event, it's it might be enough. difficult it's because, <laughs> because on, on the issue of, I mean, why many, there are many Africans in, in France. I mean, we know that yeah. now we've seen higher levels of migration. So obviously that, and you look at the news headlines on TV, and you know, it's, those are the dominant headlines right now, especially across Europe, France, among uh, those countries. So I, I guess I can understand why that would be the perception and thought. I mean, it's, it's in your face every day. So obviously this, uh, the 2020 African culture season would be a good uh, initiative. I'm just thinking that for it to have, perhaps have the desired effect, perhaps it should be something that could be done on an annual basis. You are totally right. But I think also that this is not enough if you want really to, to, to change the perception and also to, to go back on this idea of, on, on this reality of, of the migrant mm. you know, uh, um, issue, which is right now one of the biggest issues that uh, uh, we, the, the, the European leaders are trying to, to, to solve. The reality why people from Africa want to go to Europe, because they think they will find a better life in Europe. And unfortunately, this is no longer the case. So the big question is how to help young people in Africa to find a job in Africa, to get the proper education, to build their future in their country. Because most people prefer to live in their country of origin with their, with their families, with their, the, the reality. But they need to find enough money to really pay their bills and on um, on, on build a better future. So, one of the things that France is now doing, not just France, but also other European countries, is investing massively in education in Africa so that they can really support uh, you know, different countries to help them uh, provide more education so that people can you know, build their future with um, um, proper learning locally. And potentially that will help at least reduce the number of migrants to, to Europe. Okay. Let's talk about Trace TV. Now let's shift gears a bit to talk about Trace TV's future plans. Uh, and uh, you mm. made a statement, uh, and, and uh, obviously it's true, the way music now is being distributed. You've talked about ways uh, artists and producers having to find new ways you know, to make money, revenue streams, mm. because of the way music yeah. is now being distributed. So how do you think that is going to shape the music in industry going forward? Oh, I, I think it is started already, in fact. Most uh, successful artists are multi multi-talented artists. They, are, they won't just use their talent for their music, but they will use also the, their image, their mm -hmm. brand, to go into additional direction, whether it's fashion, whether it's Nollywood, yeah, yeah. endorsement, uh, brand endorsement, endorsement yeah. brand endorsement. So I think that's something that is, that is going to be more and more important in the future. As far as we are concerned at Trace, we are now trying to provide um, the artists multiple services to help them monetize their work. So obviously, the first thing they are looking for is exposure on TV because they, they build their brand and they, and, they, and they can get some, some endorsements, they can get some, some, some tools, some concerts, some, uh, some gigs with, with, with that. But on top of that, we, we have launched um, a digital distribution company for music, so we provide this service to them. We do some publishing, we do more and more event organization, like the things that we are going to do on, uh, on Tuesday here at the Shrine. And, uh, and this is part of a global ecosystem, you know, uh, we have identified nearly 40 different potential revenue streams okay. in the music environment. I will not going to list all of them now, but that means that there are different ways uh, today to, to, to make money with your music. But at the end of the day, you have to be very professional. It's very important also that the managers around the artists are aware of all this and try to defend the interest of, of, of the artists. And one of the things also that need to be fixed in Africa and also in Nigeria 
is a collective society, you know, mechanism um, because definitely, you know, a lot of people are using music without paying rights. So mm. it's very important. Yeah, piracy, that, issue, yeah, issues yeah, of piracy. Yeah, yeah. How is, uh, what are your thoughts on piracy, the way Nigeria is fighting piracy? Do you think we're doing enough? It's, it's, no one is doing enough because there's still a, a massive amount of, of piracy and it's very difficult, especially mm. on, in this digital world, to completely prevent piracy. But I think it's going into the right direction. And, uh, and what is very interesting also is whenever you launch services, music services that are really affordable for people. So you can't ask people to pay the equivalent of $10 per month like you will do it for Spotify or for Apple Music. But um, the reality of Africa is different. So you, we have to adapt all these models to the reality of what people can really afford in, 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 in Africa. And whenever there's this type of offering, you know, MTN launch, uh, MTN Music Plus, and uh, you've got different initiatives like this, when, you, when, when it's really uh, sought for the local audience and for the local means, then it works. Tell us about the event at the shrine. One oh, of the reasons why you're here. That's the most complicated event <laughs> that we've been working on for the last 20 years. Oh, wow. on, um, on our, our team here in Nigeria, led by uh, Samo uh, Onyemelouk, is, is doing a great job to try to bring together all the stakeholders, all the technical constraints of the shrine, because you know the shrine is a, is a big warehouse, uh, uh, iconic place. But uh, a specific you know, <laughs> type of music, Afro, you know, Afro Juju music. Yeah, and definitely. And obviously, on 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 Femikuti will perform on, on on Tuesday evening. And we are bringing also other artists like uh, Yemi Alade. There will be Charlotte Dipanga from uh, from Cameroon. There will be um, uh, you know also some some models. There will be some uh, Nollywood segments. There will be uh, designers. There will be visual artists. It it will be. We we try to do in in, in, in less than three hours. A kind of snapshot of what will be the African cultural season in France in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, and on top of that, the President Macron will interact with um, the governor of the, of the Lagos State, and uh, there will be a uh, you know, great host, and uh, Benki W will be the, the super MC of, of, of this event. Uh, uh, the, so there are so many things together, and we, we have to align the interests of so many egos sometimes, mm -hmm. and plus the security <laughs> of uh, issue of uh, l'Elysée, because you know the shrine environment is not uh, easy. So, um, very interesting, very, very interesting, very challenging, and, I imagine. Uh, but we, we, we hope it will be a great success. Well, speaking about challenges, I mean, going into, because many times we also, when we talk entertainment, we also talk about the future of television and yeah. how it's rapidly changing, and of course, technology always at the heart of how even television itself, yeah. apart from even the content, television itself uh, is going to progress. Does it, uh, when you look into the future, do you get a little nervous? I know that innovation is always the key. You have to be very innovative, but lucky for Trace, like you said, you've already identified 40 <laughs> your revenue streams, which is absolutely fantastic. But do you, would, you, would you be anticipating those kinds of uh, game changes that come into the market to just perhaps change I can tell you I am very, very nervous mm. uh, because this is moving very fast. Even if we innovate, uh, we are a company with, a, with certain constraints, so we can't really change things like this. And uh, when you see the success of Netflix, mm. on, on Netflix taking over a big part you know, of, the, of the consuming time, of uh, watching time of, 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 of people on, on, the, on their screen, on, um, without investing that much locally, so with great content. So we have to take all this into consideration when we imagine the future of trees. So as far as we are concerned, our strategy is very clear. What we want to do is to build the strongest possible brand on, on media uh, with a um, TV asset, uh, radio asset, digital assets. And then we are going to develop multiple services that are consistent and relevant with the brand and with the audience. So we started obviously with the music business, then the mobile business I mentioned to you previously, and we are also in, certainly going to invest in a new business, which is an education business, uh, because we realize, especially in Africa, that you've got about 200 million young Africans that will enter the, 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 the market mm -hmm. without having a proper education. A lot of them are really interested in the creative industries and the digital industries, 
on, a, on the Congo during three years to follow very expensive courses and very you know, um, fancy schools. So we are now developing an online plus on campus mm. um, like offering so like an, an and academy, partnership. Yeah. Yes, with a, it's a blended learning uh, approach that we'll do in partnership with existing schools. So hopefully we'll be able to launch this uh, new venture next year. Thank you so much and of course all the best and hope to see you sometime again soon. Thank you very much, Esther. I have been speaking to Olivier <laughs> Laoshe. He's a chairman and CEO of Trace TV. We've been looking at Nigeria and, of course, the French connection, focusing on the music and entertainment industry in Africa.